Hey guys, today we're going to enjoy one of the most fantastic games. This is probably the most beautiful combination in chess history. This game was played in 1852 in the romantic era of chess. So you can imagine there would be many sacks, uh, furious attacks. It was played between Anderson and the first knee. Let's go with the game. This is the evergreen move by move. So e4 controls the center and develops the bishop, e5, also center, and bishop. Knight f3 is developing and attacking the pawn on e5, and knight c6 develops and defends. Bishop c4 prepares to castle, develops, and also the bishop is very active over here. And then bishop c5, also very active, wanting to castle b4, and this is Emma's gambit here. The idea is that after bishop takes b4, white can play c3. And now they are playing d4 very fast, creating a really strong center of two pawns. But also, the queen can go to b3 with many threats over here, and the bishop can go to a3. That's a great diagonal for the R bishop in some lines. In the game, uh, black plays bishop a5. Actually, bishop b7 is also a very theoretical move, but bishop a5 is actually fine. The idea is that the bishop is still pinning, so after d4, white cannot recapture with the pawn. Anyway, white plays d4 here, and after he takes d4, they just castle here. Now they are threatening their recapture, as you can see in these lines, white doesn't care too much about material, they really care about a really fast development. In this position, black is playing d3, the idea is that um, white is recapturing here and creating the great center with the two pawns, but also if they can, uh, if they capture here, there is queen b3 with threats, but also developing the knight over c3, that's good. So after d3, uh, the pawn is still blocking the knight. So white plays here queen b3, and this is taking the initiative, threatening things over here, but black plays queen f6, is defending, however there is this move now, e5, and the queen has to move to g6 at this point, because if knight takes pawn, there is this rook e1, and this is pinning, getting the knight. So black can play d6, but they are going to lose the bishop, at least, I mean there are many ways to win, but uh, this is very strong and very simple, queen b5 getting the bishop over there. So after e5, black needs to play queen g6, and then rook e1, just improving the rook, guarding the central pawn on e5, knight e7 is just developing, and then bishop a3 also develops to a very good down. Black plays b5, trying to disconnect a little these pieces and open the file for the rook. We need to say that this move is probably a little dubious, I guess castling is a very normal move for this position, and white still has some compensation for the material down, but the king is already pretty safe over here. So b5 is the move we have in the game, and then queen takes b5, and then rook b8, improving the rook, and the queen has to go to a4. The bishop goes to b6, is much more active over there, and then the knight is finally developed over d2, guarding the other knight, connecting the rooks, going to uh, better squares over the center. Bishop b7 develops and puts the bishop on a really good diagonal and also there is a coincidence here with queen and bishop on g2 and then knight e4 is improving the knight a lot is interfering this line so white could be taking that pawn on d3 but also remember black king is still in the center so we are activating our pieces a lot and that could mean something later in the end queen f5 which is not so clear maybe he's trying to get this pawn but that's very dangerous and then bishop takes pawn on d3 getting the pawn back, but also many threats with the bishop on the same line as the queen with a discovered over d6 or over f6. Queen goes to h5, getting away from that threat, and at this point is when everything is going to start. Here there is this move, knight f6. Actually, uh, we need to say that uh, there is a simpler move, very strong for white here, and it is this knight g3. The problem is that the queen is going to be in trouble in this line. Queen doesn't have too many squares to move. For example, queen h6, then we can play bishop c1. And again, the queen uh, doesn't have too many options. Maybe queen e6 is a move, but we can play bishop c4. And this is a really big problem for black. For example, queen g4 is not possible because bishop takes pawn, this covered, getting the queen over there. Also, queen g6, we play knight h4, and if the queen goes to g4 again, this covered over there. So maybe they can try something like knight d5. But, well, still is winning for white, then knight g5 over here, attacking the queen, and after queen g4, this move, rook e4, the queen is trapped. We are getting 
at least some really big material in this line. So that was a really strong move knight g3, but in the game uh, this move knight f6 is going to be is going to create a fantastic uh, combination in some moves. So let's enjoy. Uh, we shouldn't say this is a mistake uh, because of the beauty they created after this move. So g takes f6, e takes f6, and this move rook g8 is improving the rook, but also a uh, black pieces are really active now observe the rook the two bishops and also the queen over there there is a lot of pressure but not only that observe that white pieces are not defending white pieces are just attacking over there so the king is really exposed here on g1 this is getting really interesting at this point there is this move rook a d1 and this seems to be very slow but it's actually very strong the idea is that now the rook is on this half open file and it's getting access to d7 and this is going to be essential in the combination we will see very soon. In this position, uh, Dufresne is going to play queen takes f3, which is, a, we could say, a wonder blunder. Because uh, because of this, then we have the most beautiful combination ever. Uh, the right move in this position was a little crazy. It's this move, bishop d4. It's really hard to understand. It's the move the engine is suggesting here. and. Actually, when we analyze this, it's not so uh, it's, not, it's not so strange. I mean, uh, we can capture the bishop, but then the rook is blocked. The file is closed, so now the move queen takes f3 is going to work. There won't be tactics over d7, and the engine is suggesting a line over there where this is going to end up in a draw after some tactic and some complications. It seems to be more or less a, an equal game. So after rook d one. Uh, black just took the knight on f3 and well this is actually where the combination starts here there is a forced win for white you can pause the video and try to analyze a little but the combination is actually strong and it's actually fantastic the move white played was rook takes e7 at this point black has like three options like knight takes rook king d8 and king f8 but we can discard very easily king f8 because of the discover over here so let's focus on king d8 and knight takes rook in the game he took here so let's see what could have happened after king d8 then another sacrifice rook takes d7 one more time black has three options king takes rook king e8 or king c8 but well let's discard very quickly king e8 because of rook e7 and then the king has to go here or here where they will be discovered either over the diagonal or over the open file and too many pieces and too many open lines over there so let's not focus on that let's focus on the other lines and they are king takes rook and king c8 after king takes rook on d7 uh, we have this move bishop f5 it's a double check bishop and rook black has to play king e8 here and then check with bishop d7 the king has to go to d8, we capture the knight, we are getting the queen but also many threats over here the, the rook is protected by the queen so this is going to be made very soon so that's why that line is not going to work the other line is king c8 and here this is actually probably the most fantastic moment of this combination uh, here white can play this move I really like I will say it right now and it is this rook d8 is giving the rook three black pieces can capture that rook is a great rook sacrifice but let's analyze the three captures are going to be losing the game for black for example probably the one that looks better rook takes rook is not working just because of the queen hanging remember the rook was doing an important job over here pinning the pawn so here white can just capture that pawn I mean that queen on r3 so rook d8 we know this is not working but you might be thinking okay what happens after king takes rook well then uh, we just discover like bishop e2 for example and then we are getting the queen and also the attack is very strong but the material advantage is going to be too much and finally the line where black takes with the knight there will be a forced mate we can play here this beautiful attraction queen d7 and when the king takes we have double check with uh, the bishop over f5 on the rook on d1 and this is made in the next uh, either after king e8 or king c6 we will play bishop d7 checkmate so now we know that king d8 is not going to work in the game knight takes rook was played and then 
again the same attraction with the queen sacrifice queen takes d7 and observe that the rook on d1 is going to be essential as we were saying when we played that move on the board and here there's a principle we want to remember and it is that when we're attacking we want to involve as many pieces as possible we want to put our pieces really active the tactics and the combinations will appear on the board once your pieces are very active in pretty good positions and that's what is going on here so queen takes d7 king takes d7 and then bishop f5 is double check if the king goes up we have bishop d7 that's made if the king goes to e8 then well bishop d7 and checkmate in the next after king f8 bishop takes e7 that's a really nice checkmate if you guys have any question let me know in the comments check out this video over here i'm sure you will enjoy it thank you like subscribe see you on the next